space fund, which started at um, 7.5 million and a lot went to the community um, as well. Um, <coughs> we have borrowed for just not capital. We have borrowed for making money available um, to open space um, uh, initiatives. And this seems to be an, uh, an open space initiative, 10,000 low to borrow, but I mean, it, there are other items on here we may be considering out of that same fund. The great bulk of, of the expenditure from that fund has gone into projects that are not uh, within council ownership. Councillor Scott, and then. How much of that facility remains? Um, there or thereabouts, 500k, I think. Um, uh, plus, plus the provision for the extra million in year four, five, whatever it is. So, um, Mr. Yeah. Chairman, this is a request that here and now. Yeah. The extra million is not to be drawn down until some future time. So, mm. could we actually um, consider how then you could refund? any request out of that remaining, if it's only 500... Thousand. 500,000, is yes, it? Yes, okay, 500, yes, 500,000. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Could we put that money up on the board so we can start seeing where it goes? Mm. Okay, while that's going up, Councillor Hewitt. Mm. So I'm wondering if you can just help me here, Mike. Um, this money comes from open space and this um, education, no, Trust, I'm missing the name of it. Um, um, they they did the the restoration work from the 2011 storms through the uh, Tiangyangi Reserve, yeah. and they're seeing that they'll also be continuing on up the coast. And I took you out and showed you right at the end of where we're talking mm. about an area that's got considerable um, erosion that's been compounded mm. by the cyclone Pam and the storms yep. since then. So, how will that work kind of continue? to be covering the coast and then w which which pocket of money will it come out come from yeah. if you're looking at holistically mm. you know what they're trying to do a little bit further on mm. um i don't really understand their long-term plans or how quickly they want to achieve them um i know we have have made um subsidized plantings further along the coast um, and that's through the regional land care scheme um probably wise then in my my view to um, make contact with with this trust um, understand what their long-term plans are um, and see well come back to council really with with a proposal that sort of will where that links whether it's a regional land care scheme in terms of dune care or um, planting what what could be done I, I don't know at this stage. I'm not sure. I know they have done a lot of um, planning work associated, associated with the Oapoto um, Lagoon prior to um, embarking on their work, um, but I'm not sure whether they've done planning work further up the coast. Chair, so I, I'm not sure. I don't think that. I mean, what they're asking for 10 grand and we're getting we're yep. up the coast. I mean, might mm. have to find another 20 million somewhere mm. um, for all the land erosion. These guys, seriously good bunch of people, a um, lot of um, hands-on, a lot of volunteers, um, finding, finding money from elsewhere, asking us for 10 grand, well, you'd have to give it a tick, subject to all the other things. I mean, why would you not give this a tick? Well, yeah. just, just to follow on from that, though, 10,000 is, is buying stuff. I mean, if you go to the mm. submission, yep. yeah, yeah, no. they're buying stuff that and we might be able to provide, yes. like uh, we'll get some plants out of our friend beside you there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, etc. Um, build a platform, the, yep. the the bones of a platform at the works group, that sort of stuff. It may not actually be cash at the end of the day. Yeah. It'll still cost money. It'll, it does, it'll still cost money. Just well, the question is, um, I mean, I'm I'm more than comfortable with with a decision if it went that way to to provide them money. But the the question I then have of council is if if we get further requests down the track, do you want to be that decision to be made at council <coughs> or for this sort of size, do you want that to be made at staff level? I mean, how, how do you want this sort of thing handled from here on? Bring it to council, Bring play it safe. Mm. I'd, I'd move that this uh, request uh, be supported uh, and funded from the existing uh, open spaces um, 
fund. So you, you're, you're moving that there is a change to the LTP and that the money be funded from wherever you said it was. Yeah. Well, it doesn't really change the LTP. No, no there's a no. provision in the LTP for it. It's, it's a drawdown, so it is a change to the LTP. Well, uh, uh, Mr Chairman, it'll be, um, I think the resolution of it be accommodated within the LTP funding. Um, yeah. And the decision made by you is to make funds available. It isn't going to affect the bottom line of the LTP. No. Mm. You're happy to second that. But before that, did you have a question? Yes, I did. So if this goes ahead, and what about um, potentially affected landowners in that area who are not in support of this? Is that, is that oh, I'm aware of that, that being the case. I, yeah, it's not our I, problem. I, yeah, I mean, we, we are contributing to something that the community has presumably agreed to. Um, I'm not, yeah, I, I don't well, want to get... I, I don't believe so. No, I don't yeah. see that need, no. <laughs> Moved and seconded. Mm. Uh, Councillor Pipe seconded it. You wish to speak further, Councillor Dick? You've, you've got it captured there, seconder. Yeah, no, no, it just, it just seems to me as though um, that's a, 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 good, a good way forward for this particular group that came with a specific request for that particular area, one step at a time, you know. It's all very well looking down the track and saying, yes, they're gonna go up the coast, but let's just take one step at a time. And the request was pretty specific as to what they wanted. Uh, if it can, you know, if if it could be done with a bit of help, I know it all costs money, but um, if that comes out of that particular fund, then that's good. Mr. Other speakers, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I will support it, but I am a bit concerned that we are finding a spot for all this money. I, I thought we'd resolve, we'd put all the things down, put the money down, and add it all up, and then say, okay, we can't do that, but perhaps we can take that one out to here and that one out to here. Um, I, I would just like to go through these things and say, in principle. Do we support it? Um, put the money alongside it. Yes, we would. If we had the money, we would support that. And then at the end, we have a really, well, uh, hell, that's a 10% rate increase, but we can take that one out there and take that one out there. Rather than take them out now, I'd we, like to see, well, it's a quantum. We do have a... I will support that, though. Yeah, yeah we do. Um, well, I'll take a moment to speak. We do have other opportunities here. It's not all set yeah. in stone today on the basis that um, we get through the hearing, we come to a place, resting place, and then it's got to go through a council meeting. So it is debated again, potentially. Okay, other speakers? I'll put that motion in. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Contrary, no. Carried. Um, we've got, we've had a, uh, well, a gap, a gap in proceedings because someone hasn't turned up, so let's keep going here. Um, so let's get on to what have we got, Future Farm and Collective. Uh, perhaps um, we could get an idea about where that funding would, would be coming from. Oh, or did you wish to, well, perhaps I'll hand over to the Chief Executive. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Look, th this, um, this particular funding request is um, a hugely significant one in terms of the quantum of money that's, that's being asked for and for it to come in via a submission to the long-term plan without an opportunity for others to, to submit on it is um, somewhat unusual. Um, however, it, it is in front of you and um, you have to make a decision on it. One of the, so we've had a, had a good look at the, um, at, at the proposal collectively and um, you can sort of see, see the officer's um, response here um, is really um, uh, around, I guess, the message is that you know we do a lot of work with the um, with the various primary industry sector groups. Um, we have a pan sector group who we work with. Um, we believe that any uh, initiative that is looking to um, uh, work with the the eighty percent and not just the early adopters needs to have the support of those various sector groups to be able to do that. So um, we're recommending that um, <coughs> that this proposal. Um, uh, be considered further um, once the land management operational plan has been um, presented to council later on this year because there's certainly uh, quite a bit of crossover in terms of the work that's done uh, or being proposed to be done through this hub and, and the work that's done by land management. So that's the first thing. And then the second um, is around having that, that concept then um, uh, discussed with the, with the PAN sector group to, to seek their support. Uh, and then um, 
uh, look at how it may be funded or if and how it would be funded after that. But I'll ask um, Mr Drury or, uh, to comment on the, the source of the funding. So can you just refer to it's, uh, Sorry, so it's on page nine of your um, attachments excluded from agenda. Um, page nine. Okay. Item six, page nine. <laughs> Of the agenda, it's attachment 16 under separate cover. Yes, yes. So there, so sorry. No, there was. An attachment under separate cover, which was item six, and it had attachments 16, 17, and 18 with it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's page nine of that. Um, unfortunately, there wasn't time to, to question them about this, but can anyone tell me of the um, group of people who were attached, were they actually part of the group making the submission? or Because it actually said the f endorsed by. And do any of these people expect to get work out of this? Um, I'm not sure that we've actually um, clarified that with anyone. Sorry, I don't know. And my second question related to the fact that they were the stress their independence, but any any sum of ratepayer money like this actually has very strong strings attached, and that is that this council actually keep sets the KPIs, and it's reported back against meeting the council's KPIs. And that was a reason, one of the reasons for us looking at you know you considering first of all what is already done by council and then looking at potentially where, where the gaps are and how they can be delivered. And if I can have a third question, Mr Chairman. Um, it's a pity we haven't got, um, well, we've got Mr Avey here, but um, I think Mr Maxwell Lawside probably would have been involved in this. Um, farm environmental plans that they talked of, um, if farm environmental plans, I take it, will be far more comprehensive than just soil management. Is that correct? Um, ab absolutely, and um, that's one of the issues that has been worked through with the pan sector group because each of the industry areas has their own view of farm environmental management plans at the moment, um, and the effort is being made to try and get everybody um, agreeing to the same sort of core issues that need to be addressed and um, what can be per peripheral to that, but also the sort of standards that are expected within those, within the responses to those core issues. So there is a lot of discussion with the pan sector group just trying to align all of, all of those at the moment. Mm. So... We have one other question related to Regional Council, the proper place for funding <coughs> was the MPI, either through Sustainable Farming Fund or Primary Growth Partnership. Um, I really um, can't answer that. I, I mean, I, I must say my assessment or my sort of initial um, reaction to the submission was that there is an awful lot of proposal, of, of, of that proposal that is very, very similar to what I would expect to see in our own land management operational plans. So I'm sort of seeing a real potential for crossover, conflict, doubling up, um, that obviously uh, is not, wouldn't be desirable, so I'm not quite sure how we would work through that. But, but just, to yeah. is, mm. is it possible that some of the delivery stuff eventually, I'm, I, I don't think we're in a position to make a decision mm. on this right now, but is mm. there, this concept may have, may have use later on perhaps? 
Um, don't know until we see the plan. Yeah, we don't but really know until we till we see that. I don't think. I mean, it's um, very early on in the in the process associated with uh, implementing plans under the national um, policy statement for fresh water. Um, so yeah, probably too early to er, too early to tell. And there is a lot of work from our land management team um, that is being done now. Um, and it is a real challenge to to um, to link in with 80% of the farming community. So, putting it into perspective, land management team budget is around two million dollars a year, and that carries on. Um, I'm sort of looking at this um, proposal with a half million dollar uh, a year, and thinking, how can they achieve um, more for that? With, within that budget than regional council is achieving at the moment and um, um, there must be some other sort of options or proposals that that should be considered alongside this. Councillor Balfour. Mm. I barely know where to begin here. Uh, when you look at this list of people, all of whom support the submission, uh, you have some of the most experienced land management people in the region uh, united around this proposal, some of whom are expatriates uh, of this organization. Dan Bloomer, Garth Isles wrote the book on soil management. Uh, Dan Bloomer is a leading light in this field. A couple of these people are on the board of uh, Landwise. Uh, a couple of them made presentations at the uh, Hort Day the other day. They're held in high esteem uh, in, in the realm they work in. Uh, all of them uh, are very hands-on in terms of improving farming practices and land use practices uh, and knowledgeable about it in this region. And what, what they have uh, concluded uh, is that with all due respect to the $2 million that might be in, in our budget, uh, I think they feel uh, there is greater opportunity to leverage the local experience that is here and the networking that they have done, which this is the tip of the iceberg of, to deliver better farming performance in Hawke's Bay. The staff reaction is a kick to touch uh, to basically get this out of the current budget cycle. Uh, simple as that. Uh, and uh, it doesn't do justice to the extent to which these folks are plugged into the pan sector group, which I challenge you to find an accomplishment of the pan sector group uh, referenced anywhere on our website. You can't even locate the pan sector group. It's a, it's a semi-annual coffee clatch. Uh, so, uh, here we have a very serious proposal from a very serious group of people uh, and I think they need to get some support to plant the flag and see how this evolves. They have not articulated any particular uh, uh, model, if you will, as to how they should relate to the Regional Council. I think they're aware of a whole range of, of relationships that now exist ranging from Business Hawks Bay, Tourism Hawks Bay, the Biodiversity Forum yet to be created. There are a variety of, of relationship models that could evolve out of this. Uh, the funding prospect of, of, uh, that, that the government has now put forward uh, in terms of regional centers of excellence on one subject or another uh, is something they're very keen to explore uh, for this vehicle. Uh, so. Uh, I think what, what is represented here is uh, a great deal of enthusiasm on the part of very knowledgeable people with very deep networks into the farming community of Hawke's Bay. Uh, and I think we should seriously consider uh, helping them get this thing uh, off the ground uh, and with whatever uh, expectations we want to create is to how that should evolve in the in the further out years and so forth and so on, but uh, because I think the group is very open to how that might uh, evolve. Uh, and the relation. One last comment uh, with, with regard to the FEMS. I think the view of this group is that uh, the 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 FEMS are likely to be taken as a 
as a pure environmental box ticking exercise when the fact of the matter is that with intelligent farm plans looked at very comprehensively, not narrowly, very comprehensively, uh, farmers can be helped to increase their profit, profitability and productivity and meet environmental uh, uh, constraints at the same time. <coughs> but that has to be the goal of the exercise, and that's what that's the tie-in that these folks see. That's why they came forward kind of uh, earlier than they might have otherwise, because the the execution of those plans is an engagement with a thousand the, farmers potentially, which is good. Look, look we're getting. <laughs> it was, it was a, a, yeah, let's have a question to process because we're um, getting Mr. well Chair, out of I shape here. We are Bell, any on questions, are we not? Yes, we are. And while um, I have heard Councillor Velford um, really speak quite passionately and knowingly about this group. Is he a member of this group and is there a conflict of interest? Well, he's not listed there and he has declared a conflict. So... Is he a member of the group? I'm, I don't know. I thought he had the membership. No, and, and actually, to be fair, Councillor Scott, that's irrelevant. I think our, our discussion at the moment is about how we deal with this. I still don't think we're ready to deal with it. I don't think we're shooting anything to touch. Or we're not discouraging passion here, uh, but we just need to understand how it meshes with our existing operation. And I think that's that's the intent of the staff uh, response. And if I've got that wrong, please tell me. No, that's right. So how do we deal with this? Councillor Bevan. I'd like to make a comment as well on this. Um, this is in regard just, to this. Well, just maybe, maybe we'll get a motion on the table and then we can all comment on it because I've got a few comments as well. <laughs> and I don't, you're not trying to sell us, we, we're all getting to our own position here. The, the selling will be done in the debate where it, where it should be done. Um, so let's get a motion. What are we going to do here, guys? Someone's got, a, got an idea. Just with your micro microphone, please, Ellen. There'd be no change to the plan, to the plan um, but. Uh, then follow the two council two staff recommendations. And does someone have to second that? So what does that mean? Means there's no change to the plan, but um, one, that's one. Uh, two, HBRC consider the land management section's operational plan for 2015-16 to highlight the work proposed to be done. Um, and then take the H HB Future Farming Centre proposal to the Pan Sector Group to dis discuss um, the support of various sector groups. Can, 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 I, can, I, can I just want to seek a clarification about what that means? Does that mean that it will be taken out of consideration for the long term plan? No, it has been considered in the long term plan. But there's been no, but no financial provision is being made for it at this stage. But so it's been moved and seconded. You wish yes. to speak further? Well, I think you know it just makes sense that um, we consider the scope and range of the work and its relevance to, in particular, um, plan change six of our land, land management group and the extent to which uh, the land management group's activities meet the objectives of this um, proposal. Uh, the second comment I'd make is that they made the analogy with um, Business Hawke's Bay and Hawke's Bay Tourism <coughs> to suggest that there should be a separate organisation set up. Well. Business Hawke's Bay and Hawke's Bay Tourism do stuff that is not within our core competence. That's why we con contracted out to specialists. But um, land management um, and all of its associated um, activities in terms of the support of the rural economy and are our core business. And we employ experts, so I don't I, I don't see the the purpose in setting up something independent. If if 
it proves that there's a need for some form of liaison with people like this, then well and good, but um, we're, we're certainly in no position as yet um, until we know what uh, land management policy is, is likely to be for the, for the foreseeable future. Seconded. Uh, Mr Chairman, um, I think there's some quite exciting things in the proposition, but it is part partially commercial and as such um, it's not, um, um, I don't think, is within our realm. However, I really um, would say funding of this nature would have to be consulted on publicly, and it hasn't been. There is no way that you know, people have not been able to um, support or raise issues around it. They have not been given the chance. Um, consequently, um, it wouldn't be appropriate to consider any method, um, size of funding like that until it had gone through a proper public consultation process. Um, I would say that I do, and that's why I asked about the um, MPI funding for sustainable um, farming fund. I noticed one of the people that is um, um, endorsing actually act, has accessed that fund and has run various courses through it. So. There are two funds there that, both, that fit this criterion and that's the proper place for them to be applying for funding to, to do that outside um, a council business. Also I think it's very important, the pan sector group is, not, is, is a, um, a stakeholder group and that, that would be the start of where a consultation relating to um, the relevance to producing the farm environment plans would, would would start. Um, if the industry sees support from, from it, again, that may be in partnership with the MPI, be somewhere to go. But eventually there will be a very commercial aspect into doing this plans. We've got various groups looking at setting up and um, I think explore the, the options, but this is not the time and place to be lotting funding. Other speakers. Um, and I'll, I'll say, I've already heard from Councillor Belford, so you, you've had a shot. <laughs> but Councillor Graham. Um, I'm a little bit confused about where it's going, uh, so I just want to speak quite generically about this. Um, this is a very um, interesting group of people, the, the very kind of people that we need to drive our economy. And um, they always um, on the edge, but that's the kind of people that, that's the kind of um, thing that you need to drive an economy because most of us sit right in the middle and we just carry on every day and you get these people that are slightly outside and then they, the, the general bunch gets drawn to them and that has, tends to happen in life and I've seen it so much in my, my own thing and I'm not actually uh, having anything to do with these, I, I had the opportunity to go organic many years ago and turned it down. But I have watched how successful it's been. And I've watched how successful our economy is at the moment, and most people don't understand the kind of, the huge success that some of these uh, businesses um, on Herotonga are having at the moment. Not only Herotonga, but Sheep and Beef Boys, everyone's, the place is booming. Um, several of my mates have jobs, um, 21 jobs, one guy can't fill, middle management. Another one, five jobs. So there's a huge demand, and it's because we have people like this pulling us. So I just want to, I don't know whether we can give them the money now, um, but I'd like to have seen it on the list. Um, so I would like, so I'm probably going to oppose this motion when I think about it, because I want to see them still up there, the 300 grand on the list, and then I want to see us talk about it at the end, about can we do this or can we not do this. But I don't think we should throw it away just because it's not quite in the process. Um, because this, as I say, is a serious energy group, really, that will push our economy to where it needs to go. Thank you, Chair. I, I'm going to oppose the motion simply because it means a delay, and I think that the initiative that has been put in front of us can be funded, I suspect, out of our existing land care budget, and I think it's too important to be just put on a shelf somewhere and on the back burner. So I'm going to oppose the motion um, in the hope that it gets defeated and we can actually bring this forward with, a, with an alternative motion. Um, 
the farming community in our region is the most important economic driver for us and it faces some really significant problems such as hill country erosion, um, the, the, <coughs> the, in it, the plan change six which, which um, requires fence and that's going to spread throughout the rest of this region and the farming community to cope with all of this is going to need a significant amount of hand holding and that's not to even mention climate change which is going to uh, challenge our, our farms even further. That's why they need help and um, it's not the 10% who will take an initiative, um, the Doug Avery's of this world and work out how to do things, it's, so that it's the other 80%. That's why we have a land, a land uh, care budget as part of our operations here, but the land care budget has no focus to it and this initiative would bring a significant focus which I think is really important, which hopefully will draw the other 80% or 90% of the farming community in and show them the land management techniques that will make their land both more um, ecologically sustainable and also uh, more profitable. And I, I, I want to read a piece from the officer's response which I take issue with. They say to us, there is a significant component of the proposal that has already been carried out for the HBRC, but HBRC needs to do more to tell its story. I agree with that. That's why we need the focus of something like this farming centre. And then it goes on and says, that is why we value time spent with councillors on field trips as it enables staff to pass the message on. That's not what's required here. What's required is to get, to draw in the, 80, the other 80 or 90 per cent of the farming community. It's nothing to do with showing our stuff. It's getting stuff out into the field, out into the farm management practices that has to be the focus of what we do with our land management budget. And right now we're missing the mark because we're sitting here with a whole lot of silos of, of work we do which is not achieving the goal that we need to set for ourselves. So I'm going to oppose the motion. Yes, the pot. Yeah, I, don't, <coughs> I don't think this motion actually kicks, kicks it for touch, but um, I, th I, I recognise the, um, <coughs> the points that have been made with regards to the diverse mm. thinking um, around land care and that I think we need to appreciate the fact that there are these wide different different ways of doing things and I think we need to bring that into the mix when we when we when we have the farm management plans and so forth that we're, we're looking at. Um, I believe that this actually is the right way to go because I think with this sort of money um, we need to it would need to go out to consultation a bit wider than just it landing in this. I think that going to the um, to the uh, the pan sector group is a, is a is a way forward. I'd like to see it move forward, um, but I, I think that we just can't just drop the money in at this particular stage. I think our land care people um, we make the policy, don't we, on what they have to actually do. So, um, as far as our council is concerned, I mean it's up to us to direct where the land care people what they what they're actually doing. Uh, that point about making it more known as to telling our story, uh, that's something that surely we can, um, we can deal with actually here in the, in the council. But I think working with these people, and I, and I agree, those, those people are pretty, pretty smart people um, and have done some pretty good work uh, and are continuing to do that work. That message has to get out, but um, I believe that it, uh, it needs to be done actually in a better way. Mr Summer. With your microphone on. The, the pro proposal has, um, has intrinsic merit, um, but it needs to be tested against um, knowledge of what the Regional Council um, land management team with its significant budget intends to do to, to face the challenges um, that are coming up, Plan Change 6 and whatever, and I'm sure, or if I'm not sure, I would hope that uh, the land management team in putting together their proposal for 15-16 will themselves have a good look at this, uh, this the proposal and see what synergies or uh, what uh, merits or otherwise may be in it, but for the moment it's premature. Thank you. I'll put the motion in. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. And against. Aye. Carried. Division, Division in favour.
and against. That's good. Yeah. Let's break for morning tea, and uh, our Kelly's here to kick us off uh, at ten past. Please. Mm -hmm.